Well, it's that time of month again. We've got another boatload of exciting new fragrances launching, and I'm going to let you know what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about a lot of exciting new fragrances soon to drop. Which fragrances are you guys excited about? Do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. But let's get started. First fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Tom Ford. It's Mer Mystere. So I first reported on Mer Mystere. I had found out about it and told you guys about it back in February of this year. So now it's officially, you know, launched. Well, launching sooner, announced, I should say. And I'm really excited about Mir, Mir Mystere. Mir is a resinous note. And this one kind of seems like it's going into that direction of uh, maybe Eben Fumé and things like that. But Mir as a note hasn't been a very exciting note until I see a ton of, not a ton, but some fragrances launching uh, that features this note. So this one from Tom Ford features musk, myrrh, myrrh absolute, sandalwood, smoky notes, and ultra vanil. Don't know what that last note is, but some kind of a proprietary note. But this one I'm actually really, really excited about. I'm hoping it's going to be a great fragrance. What are your thoughts on this fragrance? Has anyone gotten their nose on it? I know there's some fragrances that fall out of the sky and people end up with them before they're launched, but perhaps one of you has the fragrance and has checked it out. But this is one that I'm really, really excited about and I want to get my nose on it as soon as possible. And speaking of myrrh, we've got another myrrh-focused fragrance. This time, a sister house to Tom Ford, I should say not really, uh, more of a... Uh, Estee Lauder House, which is the parent company of both of the brands. This is Le Labo's Mer 55, which I think this is a city exclusive for Shanghai. So does that mean we're going to have access to it when the city exclusives are launched next month? We shall see. I'd love to get my nose on this one as well. This is featuring notes of ambergris, jasmine, musk, myrrh, oud, patchouli. It seems like it's going to be a very intense one. I'm really, really curious about this one too. And as soon as I get my nose on it, I will report back to you guys. So going to the house of Maison Crivelli, it seems like they're launching a couple of ouds back to back. So there was a fragrance called Oud Maracuja, created by Jordi Fernandez that launched exclusively, was it, a, was it a Harrods or a Selfridges exclusive? One of those stores in England, London. Now we've got Oud Stallion, same perfumer, Jordi Fernandez, and it features notes of leather, Oud, cardamom, osmanthus, nutmeg, cedar, patchouli, tonka, rose, jasmine, and saffron. Are you guys bored of Oud or are you really excited about Oud? I'm kind of in the middle. Sometimes Oud can be fun. I enjoyed Oud Maracuja, it was a fruity Oud. This one seems not as exciting, although it has osmanthus. So osmanthus can create a fruitiness. So we'll see how it is. I'm a bit bored of oud, though. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good one where you say, you know, oh my god, this smells great, I want to wear it. Because I'm not feeling that way with a lot of ouds lately. And speaking of oud, we've got a designer oud launching very soon from the house of Ralph Lauren. Polo oud. So Ralph Lauren had a series of these Middle Eastern fragrances back... Probably six, seven years ago, I own the Oud, and I also own the Leather. Th those are the two. They've been discontinued, and they also had a Cashmere, I believe. In fact, I might even have the Cashmere. I don't even remember. I bought them to save to have as a backup for later. But now we've got Polo Oud launching. How is this going to be? They're capitalizing on Polo, all of a sudden they came out with the new cologne a couple years ago. Now we've got the Oud. I don't know who the perfumer of this fragrance is, but it features notes of Oud with Gayak wood, frankincense, patchouli, vetiver, rose, cinnamon, orange blossom, clary sage, pink pepper. Where's the leather? Is this supposed to smell like a flanker of the original Polo green? I don't know, but we shall see. I'm, I'm always curious to try, and sometimes designer de designers make great fragrances, and I'm hoping that they do a good job with Polo Oud from uh, Ralph Lauren's Polo collection of fragrances. Well, it seems that this particular series of fragrances will not die. So we've got an elixir launching soon from the house of Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled. Boss Bottled was one of my favorite fragrances towards the mid to late 90s. 
Loved wearing it. I like that sweet cinnamony apple-y combination of notes. And I also enjoyed that creation created by Anik Minardo. So here we have Anik Minardo once again doing an elixir version of Boss Bottled. Now last year they launched a Parfum version which I did not like. So we'll see how the elixir is. I'm, I'm curious to get my nose on it. But I don't see the signature apple cinnamon combo. There's labdanum here, cedarwood, patchouli, vetiver, cardamom, and frankincense. So it's almost like they're just using the name now to create these brand new fragrances. And they're really cranking them out, you know. Last year we had the parfum. Now really quickly we're having the elixir. What comes after the elixir? We shall see. But if anybody's excited about this one, do let me know. I think the original still smells great today. And I would love to, you know, have them maybe intensify that and make it into something a bit more robust rather than, you know, focus on something that doesn't smell like it. But uh, do let me know your thoughts if you're a fan of this collection and if you're looking forward to Boss Bottled Elixir. But moving on to Penhaligons, they have a new fragrance called the Omniscient Mr. Thompson. They have a collection of fragrances, the brand called Portraits, and this goes into the Portraits collection. And sadly, there's no representation of Penhaligons here in Northern California anymore. No stores sell them, so it's hard for me to smell, get my nose on Penhaligons fragrances. But I'm always curious because I love the brand. It was one of my first niche houses that I dug into, you know, digging into, you know, enjoying fragrances. Along with Anik Gutal, Penhaligons was... Um, you know, the second niche house. But this features notes of pink pepper, orris, sesame seeds, sesame milk, woody notes, and vanilla. So I read that it's going to be kind of a creamy fragrance, and I'm curious. And it seems like sesame seeds are kind of starting to slowly become in vogue kind of a thing. We shall see how it is. If any of you have gotten your nose on this one, do let me know. I believe it's now selling. Up next, another Maison Margiela fragrance launching soon. No perfumers on the, these fragrances, unless uh, there is a perfumer, I will let you know. Uh, but uh, Maison Margiela is launching Under the Stars, and it seems like another oud fragrance. Uh, they had a collection in dark bottles that came in Eau de Parfum concentration uh, that, uh, that had a fragrance in that collection called Across Sands, which was oud and dates, kind of very Middle Eastern. Now we've got something completely different in an oudy, you know, style. We've got black pepper with cedar, labdanum, leather, and oud. This seems like it's going to be very, very intense, dark, dense, leathery, woody, oudy kind of a thing. Let's see if it's going to be animalic or anything like that. I'm, I'm curious to, you know, get my nose on this, but I feel like I've been, you know, let down a bit with this house and their recent launches on a date was pretty good it was a bit weak but the stuff that came before that the rain one and the autumn one was very boring to me and this one it sounds like it's going to be boring but as i said i'm always excited to get my nose on it but speaking of oud we've got another i think this is oud yeah it is oud this is another fragrance from the house of acro i believe it's somewhat of a middle east exclusive i'm not 100 percent sure it's called east it comes in a dark bottle rather than a clear bottle like the previous acro fragrances it's created by olivier cresp olivier cresp is the man that creates all the fragrances for acro it features notes of leather raspberry oud and ambroxan i'm just hoping really really hoping it doesn't smell like tuscan leather the idea of raspberry and leather kind of goes in that direction so i'm really 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 hoping it's not another you know uh, tuscan leather like uh, fragrance but either way if anyone's gotten their nose on east let me know, put a comment down what it smells like. And if you're really into it, does it smell like Tuscan leather? Is it even out yet? I don't, I'm not even 100% sure, but do let me know if you've gotten your nose on East. Moving on to the house of Eta Libre de Orange, they have a Herod's exclu exclusive fragrance in their more luxury collection called Nostos. Sounds like a Greek word. Um, so I'm curious to get my nose on this one, but I'd have to go to London. I'll be in London for a day soon, so maybe I'll go to Harrods and check it out. But it's Ambro Fix with Georgia Wood or Georgie Wood, Mandarin Orange, Incense, Saffron, Sandalwood, Oud, Suede, Musk, Rose. I don't know. Does it sound interesting to you guys? I was trying to figure out who the perfumer might be, and I was trying to see Ambro Fix, which firm owns that one. Is it a is it a Givaudan owned uh, proprietary note? Uh, I'm trying to figure out, but either way, I'm, I'm curious to get my nose on this. 
I do enjoy Atel Libre de Orange fragrances, and I like this more uh, luxury collection of fragrances from this house. So the House of Widian is not a house that I've gotten my, uh, you know, self into uh, really widely yet. So I'm always curious to check out things from this house because they do have some really great smelling fragrances. And they have a new fragrance called Luban, L-U-B-A-N, or Luban, created by Rhonda Hamami. It's featuring notes of white amber, tonka, gardenia, strawberries, vanilla, cedar, oud, sandalwood, white musk, rose, bergamot, pink pepper, and cardamom. So this is uh, sounding very, very interesting to me. White amber. Yeah, all the notes really sound great. And I'm wondering what she does with the strawberry in this mix with all the other notes. But this is a house I really want to dig into and really explore and see what's there. Because I've smelled some stuff in passing. Really enjoy some of the stuff but just haven't really embraced the brand but this Luban sounds great but do let me know if you're a fan of this house and what are your favorite fragrances from Widian put a comment down below so I can find out so I reported on this a couple of uh, months ago or maybe a month or so ago jump Jean-Paul Gaultier has a new fragrance for the ladies called divine whereas they launched the elixir the male elixir in the elixir concentration now divine is a note of parfum this one sounds interesting i'm not really 100 percent sure i'm sold on the notes the bottle looks gorgeous though it's quintum biche created once again features sea notes meringue lily and white flowers does that sound good to you guys i, I don't know we shall see how good that one is but um Going to be cautious about the fact that it has C notes. But that bottle, like I said, is very, very gorgeous. So Quinto Canto has two fragrances called Agape and Hamarsha. Hamarsha? Not Hamarita, but Hamarsha. So Agape is a fragrance that features notes of bergamot with black locust, chocolate, orange, vanilla, tonka, sugarcane, patchouli, frankincense, sandalwood, ambergris, and oak moss. And then Hamarsha features notes of vetiver, precious woods, patchouli, oud, cedar, birch, tonka, musk, lily of the valley, vanilla, osmanthus, caramel, chocolate, and coffee. So the second one sounds a lot better to me. It seems like it's going to go into the gourmand direction. Paolo Trenzi does really great fragrances for not only Terziano Trenzi house, but also Quinto Canto. But I feel like Quinto Canto is the one that's kind of in the shadows of the original brand, Terziano Terenzi. And most people talk about Terenzi instead of Quinto Canto. And there are definitely really great fragrances here. Although I should also say that the fragrances do remind me of one another. So the fragrances of Terenzi do remind me of the fragrances of Quinto Canto and vice versa. So it seems a bit redundant, but still you can find some great fragrances from uh, the the brands and uh, really enjoy some of them as well so if you have a favorite fragrance from uh, quinto canto do let me know put a comment down below so i can find out so it seems that loeve is also getting into the elixir game they are launching two elixir fragrances one for men one for women the first one for men is called El essencia elixir and it features notes of amber patchouli with vetiver and is essencia elixir a flanker of the eau de toilette version or the eau de parfum version because the eau de toilette version of essencia is more like polo green and then the eau de parfum version of essencia is more like aventus so I'm curious to get my nose on this one. Maybe it's going to be smelling completely different, but uh, elixirs are sounding nice. But now we've got the elixir trend uh, kicking in high gear and everybody's going to be, you know, uh, releasing a, an elixir. But Loewe's uh, Solo Ella elixir is also launching and it features notes of musk, sandalwood and tuberose. Has anyone gotten their nose on these two fragrances? Maybe they haven't launched yet, but are you guys fans of Loewe fragrances? It's a Spanish designer uh, from Spain, obviously, under LVMH. So they have some great fragrances. Uh, still want to dig into them a little further than what how much I've dug into them. But there are some out there that I really, really, really enjoy from this house, including Essenzia, the original in Eau de Toilette, which does remind me of Polo Green. So the last fragrance, no, I got two more fragrances. The, 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 the next one I'm going to talk to you about is Hermes. Tutti Twilly. So this is the third flanker of the Twilly series and it's called Tutti Twilly created by Christine Nagel who is the in-house perfumer over there at Hermes. And we've got ginger flower, lychee fruit, and musk. So it sounds like this is a fun and playful fragrance. I felt like the first one was the more adult fragrance and then the next one that they did with the Twilly series went into kind of a ginger shampoo direction. 
I don't know how this one's going to be. It sounds very playful, fun, maybe a little sweet tart and um, fruity. Uh, I, I shall see. These uh, This collection doesn't seem like it's the classy Hermes collection, but then I'm sure there's fans of these fragrances out there. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from Van Cleef & Arpel. It's Te Amara, and this is in the collection Extraordinaire Fragrances. And Te Amara is a tea fragrance, obviously, with tea notes, and it has mint with the tea, and there's musk, bergamot, cedar, pink pepper, rose, sweet pea, and cashmere. I'm sorry to say this one might be a bit not fitting of the collection, although there's Neroli Amara, there's the Gardenia Petal, there's the... Uh, D California Reverie, those are very, very fresh. Maybe this does kind of fit in there, but it just seems like it's not part of the kind of collection extraordinaire, luxurious collection of fragrances when a lot of the other fragrances are more robust and intense and uh, a lot of substance. But we shall see. I'm always interested in tea fragrances. Uh, are you guys fans of tea fragrances? Are you a fan of uh, Van Cleef & Arpel's uh, uh, Collection Extraordinaire? Do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And that's pretty much it. Those are the only fragrances that I w was excited about when I saw online. I'm sure there will be more that are you know scheduled to launch very soon which I'll do another video on in the next couple of weeks to a month. But let me know which fragrances uh, that I spoke to you about you're excited about. And if there's anything else that I missed that uh, you are excited about, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So as a bonus option, we've got a new fragrance from Beyonce. Apparently she's launching a new fragrance come November and it's going to be priced at 50 ml for $160. So it seems like it's going to go into the more luxurious direction, not as a celebrity fragrance like uh, she had. I think she had a fragrance called Heat that was like maybe like 10 years ago. But this seems like priced high and uh, not necessarily a lot of juice, 50 ml versus 100 ml and uh, more of a luxurious thing. Maybe she's starting her own skincare line like uh, Rihanna has started with Fenty. I don't know, but I don't know the details, but I'm curious to see what she does with this fragrance and, and hopefully it smells great. But if anybody, any of you have any details on this new Beyonce fragrance, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Goodbye.